today's video, I want to go over the uh, things I've learned in 10 years of ownership of a 2003 Honda Element. I'll immediately get into the first thing. There's a lot of road noise. Uh, if you don't like bumps, uh, rattles, one thing you probably won't be able to hear right now is there's a lot of road noise and rough roads. There's a lot of bushings on these things that go bad that need to be serviced quite frequently, uh, more so than other vehicles. Early 2000s, Honda wasn't great about their bushings and the way their suspensions were set up. I don't know if that picks up on camera or not, but there is a little bit of rattle in the back. The sway bar bushings end up going bad and they just rattle and clunk a lot. You just kind of get used to it when you have a Honda. The good thing is, is this has a, one of the best factory sound systems that I've ever heard. It's got a factory, an eight inch sub, it's got a full surround sound, it's got tweeters, six by nine, it's got a whole whole list of the good things as far as audio is concerned. up. Now before I get too far into this video, I want to describe that I have had this for a long time. I've had it for, I got it in 09, so I've had it for 11 years. I've done quite a few modifications to it, and uh, so this will be a little bit biased on that. So my modifications I've done to this have made it more of my vehicle and more attuned to what I want out of this thing. I want it to be a good daily driver for good long roads. Now one mistake that I made was putting these heavy all-terrain tires on here. There's a rattle. That wasn't too bad. The all-terrains are nice, but I got kind of a cheaper brand and they there's a lot of road noise. You'll be able to hear it throughout this video, I'm sure. did do is I upgraded the suspension. I went to an actual coilover, BC Racing coilover, and uh, they were pretty new. When, uh, when I got them, no one was really making a really affordable coilover for the uh, element. But the BC setup was around $900 when I got it. And uh, over factory, it's been fantastic. It gives me adjustability. It's a 15-way adjustable plus or minus on front and rear. So I kind of go around and tune it all depending on what I'm doing, if I'm actually daily driving it or if I want to do spirited driving or whatnot. Even on dirt roads, I can crank them up and make it drift a lot. So that was a really good improvement. I highly recommend doing that because the, the factory Ellen struts are pretty garbage. Um, you know, this this one has a little over 200,000 miles on there, so it, it kind of kind of wore out anyway. That brings me to, to another point, though. When Honda made these vehicles in the early 2000s, their rust preventative measures were not the greatest. Uh, this has been an Arkansas car its entire life, so the rust is not bad. There's no rust on the bottom. There's no rust anywhere that I can see. However, taking the suspension off of this thing was an absolute nightmare still. Even though this is a rust-free car, the bolts were seized up inside the uh, struts themselves, and I had to cut them to pieces to get them out. And it was an absolute nightmare. It turned an easy job into a two-day, three-day, four-day weekend job. So I, I highly suggest if you have to do suspension work on these things, be patient. It's going to take probably longer than you expect. So with all that said, if, you, if you're looking to buy an element or looking to get into an element, check out all the uh, check out all the rust areas and the wheel wells in the back uh, where the actual subframe and the swing arms mount to the body. I've seen a lot of those recently pop up on the element owners forum with it completely rusted out. And it looks like the rust is so bad, it looks like it was on the bottom of the Titanic when it went down. It, it's, it looks like barnacles all over it. So that's one, one area of concern that you really should look for, is just how, how the car was treated, if it was taken care of, because it seems like a lot of the northern cars, the elements, the whole undercarriage just looks horrific. It looks like it was sitting at the bottom of the sea. Thankfully, this is a rust-free southern car, and I had no problems out of it, except for the aforementioned the suspension removal stuff. Another thing to look for, uh, for some reason, this is a pretty common issue in elements, is the driver rear end, the driver left side rear caliper, brake caliper, will actually seize on you. Now, I had this happen probably 30,000 miles ago or so, but uh, I was driving and I'd get home and there's actually smoke 
coming out of them, that, that wheel well. And I looked and my brake was actually smoking. Just that one. The rest of them were fine. So what I had to have to do is I actually had to, I took it apart and I realized the sliders were just stuck. It had frozen and I, eventually I found out that that does happen with some of these elements. It's a little bit mixture of the sliders and some debris maybe in the brake line. But it seems to me like it was just the sliders. Because after I replaced it and I put some new grease in the sliders, it was completely fine. And that, that whole problem went away. And I haven't had any problems yet since then, thankfully. And I've kept an eye on it because that's something that's kind of scary. And when you have a brake catch on fire even. Thankfully mine was just smoking a lot and you can smell it pretty bad. Another suspension issue on the elements is the, uh, this happens with the CRVs as well, so there's a front compliance bushing that's in your lower control arms, your front lower control arms, it's kind of a disc bushing, and that disc will just completely let go and it'll just rattle around in there and it sounds like the end of the world. Thankfully, I actually drove this thing probably 10,000 miles in that rattle. It's not that bad, but every once in a while you'll hit a bright harmonic and it'll rattle the whole thing and it sounds like your front end's about to come off. It's not a great sound, but the fix is not that bad. Uh, I ended up, I was going to replace just the bushing, but I found out the lower control arm itself was only like $130. And instead of having, I didn't have a press at the time, I didn't have all the right tools, so I just bought another lower control arm and just completely replaced it. I haven't done this side yet. I just filled it with window weld while I had it up in the air, and it's been fine so far, so I'm going to keep an eye on it, but it, there's no rattles on this side as of yet. So the driver side one I had to replace, and the passenger side one is still factory, 200,000 miles. Honda, overall, Honda Element ownership is fantastic, but you really have to make sure you stay on top of all your maintenance stuff. Make sure it's all taken care of. I'll kind of go over that a little bit more later in this video, but uh, you really must stay right on top of every everything possible. Another fun thing about the element, so when I used to daily drive this thing all the time in uh, long, nice highways, long straight stretches. This thing's deceivingly fast and very quiet with the right, with proper tires. I got a lot of speeding tickets in this car when I first got it, so if you get an element, be very cautious of how fast this thing actually is. I know it's a road-going brick, but it gets away from it. It's sneakily fast. It likes living at like 70 miles per hour, so between 70 and 75, it's really comfortable and quiet. You don't really realize you're going that fast if you're dazed out listening to music. And I was pulled over quite a bit for going 70 to 55 just because I, it, it never occurred to me this thing was going that fast. The road going brick uh, comment. Gas mileage is not great on this thing, but that's to be expected. It is an actual brick. The rear view mirrors are square. There's nothing aerodynamic about this car. But with that said, it still gets, I get a realistic with these heavy tires and my suspension and a few little modifications I have, I still get a realistic 17, 18, 19 miles per gallon depending on if it's city or highway use. And that averages out to about 250 miles per tank. It has a very small tank, so that's one thing you need to be wary of when you drive an element is for the size and for what it does, Honda put a I think 12 and a half gallon tank in this thing, so it really doesn't hold a whole lot of gas. So you'll be at the gas station a lot and thinking, wow, this thing really sucks the fuel. Eh, it does, but then again, it has a really small tank. One other issue I've seen other Honda Element guys talk about is the windshield. So a lot of the early models, they had problems with the windshields cracking. So far, I've, I've had this for 11 years, haven't touched the windshield at all. I have had a couple of big rock dings, and uh, they're, they're loud, sound like you're getting shot here, but no propagated cracks, I haven't done anything. I, I should have done something, but again, I, you know, life gets in the way and I never did anything, so, so far so good. I, I don't drive this thing easily, it's been through a lot of potholes, it's been off-road a lot, it's hit things really hard, I've jumped it out of ditches before, and still no propagating yet. It may be luck, but so far, so good. As far as road manners and how it drives, I love the way it drives. My wife loves the way it drives. Everyone who drives loves the way they drive. However, uh, so what you, if you've been watching this channel for a while, I've talked about this before, but if this is your first time seeing one of my videos, this used to be my rally car. This is my very first rally cross vehicle. 
and uh, a lot of people thought that you know it's gonna be uh, top heavy it's gonna be sliding well when honda designed this thing they put on everything below the floor that's why there's so much cargo interior space so with that said all the weight's very low there's nothing really up top so it's, it's I always tell people it's built on a Civic chassis. It's not really built on a Civic chassis, but the, all the Civic uh, suspension components are there and it keeps the weight down low and that gives it very, no top heavy, no sway. It never feels like it's gonna tip over. I've been really crazy with this thing off-road. I've slid it, I've drifted it. On the road, I've been pushing, I've pushed it very, very hard and I've never had a moment where I've been like, oh crap, it, here we go. And it's never had that even. Even the craziness I do to it, you, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I'm a little bit crazy in my cars. So over the years, the interior has held up very well. It's mostly plastic. It's uh, nothing soft touch. It's all pretty hard plastic. It's kind of got that ugly silver stuff. But again, this is the very first year the element came out. This is a 2003. With that being said, I don't know if you can see it. But there's an armrest on this side and no armrest on the passenger side. Now every single passenger here that you have will immediately get in here and look for their armrest also. For some reason, the Honda just didn't put an armrest on the passenger side. <laughs> That's my biggest gripe I have about the cars. There's no passenger armrest. Now one really cool thing about Honda Element ownership is uh, there's so much OEM aftermarket support. So this was built as like a mid-20s, you know, just getting out of the house kind of car, like for that person who just got out of their own. It's got a, a complete OEM curtains that actually go all the way around that actually, I actually own for camping. And the curtains clip in everywhere so you can have complete privacy in here. As you know, all the seats lay completely flat. You can comfortably fit a queen size air mattress in here and camp in here. Uh, what's cool is all the vents are up here above here so you can actually have all your heat and air, air conditioner in here. Uh, of course, this is aftermarket, so I, I can actually watch DVDs there if I wanted to while I was camping. But there's all kinds of really cool camping accessories that came OEM for this thing because it was supposed to be for that adventurous kind of person, you know. Now, I've equipped mine with an aftermarket air intake. Did I need it? No, but I just like to hear this. sounds of it gives me a little bit of feedback again the element being so quiet all my other cars are super loud and super you can hear everything going on with the motor i just like to be able to hear this thing and eventually i may put a little bit of an exhaust i may build something for it but for right now i just like our four road going car so enough about the driving impressions we'll get it up in the lift i had to do an oil change and a few other things and we'll talk about some more little issues i found here and there and uh, i don't want this to sound like well, the element's a bad car, you shouldn't get it. I want this to be more of a video of what to look for and what to pay, pay close attention to when you purchase a Honda Element, or if you've had an Element for a couple of years and you want to know what to look forward to in the future. 200,000 miles, and uh, the only maintenance I've had to do is I replaced the belt. It was getting kind of old. Uh, one of the pulleys is actually making quite a bit of noise, so I went ahead and uh, the belt tensioner down there, I replaced that. But what's easy about this thing is you just put the pry bar on there, pull it and the belt falls off. It's super easy to swap. One other thing is with elements in all K24s is the, uh, the starter will go out at, on some point. Now everybody complains about the starter swap. It's really not that bad. You just gotta take half of the intake manifold apart. If you're a novice at uh, building stuff, it's really, it's you can do it in a day. It's just a pain in the butt because you won't start. Unless you have a manual, you may be able to roll start it. Yeah, speaking of manual, there's my manual over there. That's my second 2004 element over there. So besides that, this battery is actually out of my race car. I'm just using it temporarily. You can see the engine intake here. Just finished up with the oil change. Everything's doing fantastic. And don't don't pay attention to this. This is not great. That's just a temporary fix. But yeah, 200,000 miles, and I, I it needs a valve adjustment, but I'll do that. It's really pretty quiet even now with the new oil change, the Lucas in there. That's under the hood. I'm supremely happy with this thing though.
That's the compliance bushing I was talking about right there. This is the one I replaced on the driver's side. And this is the factory passenger at 200,000 miles. It's still doing pretty good. You can see even on this pitting here, the factory part and that bushing's worn out. Actually, I noticed a few things while I was under here on the lift. My uh, diff moves quite a bit. The diff bushings are gone. So I gotta replace those. And I actually saw my axle boots ripped here as well. So something else I'll replace down the line, but it's, it's not really bothering. You can see the uh, BC coilover suspension that I put on there. But you can see the pitting here and how just how deteriorated that is. It looks like it's the bottom of the Titanic. That's just how some of the uh, rust cars are. And the exhaust is you know, notorious for rusting. So you can kind of see this whole unit is just is not in a great shape. So I'll probably replace that for too terribly long. Well, that's my quick uh, rundown of the ownership of the 2003 Honda Element. I, would I ever do it again? Absolutely. I, would I consider buying another one? Well, I already did, if you didn't see that second one. I love this Element. The only complaint I ever had about it was I wish I had a J-Series, which eventually I do want to do a J-Swap into this one. I think it's uh, like a 3.5 liter V6 speed, just nasty in that. If you're into that kind of stuff, if you like this kind of video, let me know below. Any kind of questions, any kind of comments you have about the Element, or anything I've done to it, please let me know below. If you're considering buying one, ask me any questions you have, because I am 100% I'm open to answering anything about it. There you go, 10 years of ownership, still a happy, proud owner of a 2003 Honda Element. Just over 200,000 miles, more memories than any other car I've ever owned. So, anyway, please hit the subscribe, keep following me, keep following this Element, because it's gonna go places, along with that Element over there, you can't really see, because it's out of, out of exposure. Anyway, catch you guys later.